Good morning, everybody. My name is Bear with BearIndependent.com. I wanted to discuss with you five things that I feel like you should be doing prior to this election. Why do I feel like you should be doing them? Because I feel like I need to be doing them as well. Most prepper channels are going to be about things that you should buy. All of these will cost you zero dollars. They will take some of your time, but in light of the potential ramifications of this election, I highly recommend you spend a little bit of time, perhaps some blood, sweat, and tears, and maybe some of your treasure on these five things. Without further ado, the first thing you need to work on is your combo. You need to recharge all of your batteries on all of your radios function test all of your radios make sure that you can talk to each other and if you have multiple groups or multiple locations households that comprise your group make sure that you all can talk to each other make sure that you have all the frequencies that you need pre pre-programmed onto your radios the ability to monitor your public safety agencies in your area whether it's your sheriff's department your police department fire department or whatever is a very good thing to have because it at least you are getting some passive intelligence by being able to monitor these things. I know that many of our viewers are either in the city or the suburbs, at least a full two thirds last time I checked. Y'all are very likely going to have greater problems immediately after the election if things go sideways. Those problems may find themselves, find a way to us out here uh, that, that might happen, but it's going to probably probably start in the cities first. And so having the ability to have that early warning by being able to monitor your public safety agencies and communicate with one another, highly recommended. So charge all your batteries and function check all of your combo equipment. Okay, next is Intel. If you don't already have an area study, you need to do one right now. What's an area study? I highly recommend you go see Sam Culper at the YouTube channel Forward Observer. He has a website as well, uh, but Forward Observer, Sam Culper, check him out. He has an excellent series on how to put together an area study and what's in it. Essentially, what you're looking for when you do your area study to put a very fine point on it and to really uh, abbreviate the contents of an area study is... Who are the good guys in my area? Who are the bad guys in my area? What are the potential threats in my area? Regular threats, irregular threats, disruptive threats, so forth. And um, what is the terrain like? Not just the topography, but the people, the environment that I'm operating in. What does all of that look like? And how is that going to affect me? All right? Uh, maybe we have a very liberal sheriff, and so I'm concerned about how that sheriff is going to react to this election or whatever. Or the, um, the Bobsy gang up the road has just been itching for a reason to pop off and act stupid, and potentially these things might give them an opportunity to do that. We need to be ready for that. So do an area study. If you've already done an area study, update it now. Additionally... Bust out your bug out plan. If you don't have a bug out plan, now's the time to make one. If you have a bug out bag, but not a bug out plan, you're doing it wrong. So bust out your bug out plan, figure out where's our primary, secondary, and tertiary, where are we going? And maybe one's to the north, and one's to the east, and one's to the southwest. Cool, where are we going? And not just where are we going, who's going, how are we getting there, what are we taking, do the people on the other end know that we're coming, how long is it gonna take to get there, do we have multiple routes to get from here to there, so forth and so on. By the way, we cover all this for free here on YouTube in the Prepper Classroom video series here. There's a playlist here on YouTube for those things. All right, so bust out your area study, bust out your bug out plan, take a look at your SOPs. As a general rule, we all carry pistols, reloads, lighters, and a knife. That might need to change depending on what the operating environment looks like on a daily basis. And so what are your SOPs, your standard operating procedures? Typically, we just go to town whenever we feel like it. Maybe we don't need to do that anymore. Or maybe when we go, at least two people need to go at the same time. Maybe because it's chaos out there, we don't need to be taking our kids with us. 
so forth and so on. So what are your SOPs? And then work your network. Work your network. Who do you know? What do they know? When did they know it? How did they know it? Use that to pull that intel in, compile that data, and then push that out to your people within your group. <clears throat> Next from here is provisions. Provisions are based on two metrics, how many and for how long. What provisions do you have? Because a year's worth of food for one person is a month's worth of food for 12 people, okay? So who and for how long matters. And it's not just food, although I would certainly start with food. And it's probably too late right now for many of y'all to go out and buy more food because the way that paychecks are timed, the way that income works, the uh, accessibility to those resources at the store right now, all of that is in flux. So you may not be able to go out and buy you know, a, a semi load of food right now. And if you could, could you even put it up and stock it before the election anyway? Maybe, depending on how highly motivated you were. But it is food. It's also water. It's sanitation. Um, hardware. Tools. Long-handled tools. Provisions. Shelter. Where are you going to put all these people? Who's coming to you and for how long? Or where are you going and for how long? So square your provisions away. Okay? What do we need? Where do we need it? For how long? For how many people? Start answering those questions for yourself now so that you can be better prepared that if things go sideways, and I'm not saying they will, but if things go sideways, you have a better idea of what you're doing so that you can be proactive, not reactive. You don't want to be reacting in the moment. The more staging you can do right now, the more favors you're going to do yourself if, when things get crazy. Lastly is security. And most people think that security is you know, doing the cool guy stuff and their multicam and their rifles and their blah, blah, blah. There are elements of that for sure, but it's not just that. Uh, aerial maps are very good to have, getting back to Intel. Look at your operating environment and determine what do we need to take and hold. And I don't mean aggressively, I just mean the ability to deny access to an area, to control access and egress because you don't want to be fighting a war at your mailbox, okay? So if you're not gonna be fighting a war with your mailbox, where do you need to be to prevent that from happening? Now you can look at that aerially and determine, well, if we put two guys here and two guys here and two guys there, that's six guys right there, and uh, they're gonna need to sleep and eat. So that's 12 guys. Do we have 12 guys? We have 12 guys, but if we're doing that, we don't have anybody else to be doing this. Ah, numbers game, people matter. Been telling you all this for two and a half years. You need people. So. Who can you call up? Getting back to provisions, who and for how long? Because if we have to man three posts with two people around the clock, that's 12 people right there to say nothing of internal security, which gets into the idea, idea of who's your security, who's your QRF, and who's your auxiliary. Yes, security forces, QRF, and auxiliary. And that's about all I'm gonna say about that here. So to recap, five things you can do right now that cost you no money, a little bit of time, and I think it's worth taking the time to do these things. Camo, recharge your batteries, do a function check. Intel, dust off all of your plans and make sure that those plans are adequate to meet the current situation on the ground and or meet the expected or projected situation on the ground. Next from there, provisions. Who and for how long? Confirm those things right now so that you're not caught with your pants down, so that you're not surprised when four people you weren't planning for show up and you got no food, no water, no shelter for them, okay? Next from there, oh, I forgot workload. Workload, this is very important. Who's doing what? You have to delegate. There's gonna be a lot of things that need to get done. You're going to need to develop sections. Your, commands, your command element, your intel, your commo, your security, your agriculture, your food prep, your household work. Um, depending on how many people you have this, somebody fixing to get shot. Depending on how many people you have, this could be um, many different sections, okay? I gotta go, I'll be right back. Rural mail carrier, I let her live. Just remember, it's not waterboarding if you use diesel. Back to workload. Who's going to do what? Who's in charge? 
who's in charge of what, what do they need to do their jobs, so forth and so on. So again, to reiterate, commo, intel, provisions, workload, and security. Those are five aspects right now you can be looking at that cost you zero money. Start planning in those five areas so that if things go sideways, you have the ability to be reactive, not proactive. Lastly, I am doing a five-day series on Patreon this coming week where I'm going in-depth on each one of these issues, Camo, Intel, provisions, workload, and security, okay? There's a dedicated 15 to 20 minute video on each one of them, as well as a write-up for the $10 and up patrons. So, if you'd like to go deeper on this, you can check us out on Patreon. There's a little baby bear up here in the corner. You can click on him. It'll take you there to Patreon. It's a dollar more a month. It helps us do what we do. We greatly appreciate you supporting us in that regard. If Patreon is not something you can do right now, I totally understand. The world is sideways and every dollar counts. You can help us by subscribing if you're new here, by liking this video with a thumbs up, and by sharing this around to people who need to see it. I appreciate y'all. Stay safe out there. It's fixing to get squirrely. Shalom.